So uh, great to have everybody, and uh, from all the other visiting churches as well. Um, I want to read, let's go to uh, Ephesians 3, uh, verse 14. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to get on my knees, and if you'll read this with me, uh, I want you to read it as Paul reads it, because uh, Paul is expressing himself to us through the word, and then in verse 20 and 21, I believe he breaks into a personal prayer and says amen, but I'm going to start on my knees because Paul did, and uh, I want to pray this first verse, and the title of the lesson is, We Are Family to the End. Amen. amen. Let's pray. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. Yes. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Come on, Isn't, that, isn't that an awesome prayer at the end? Paul just breaks it down. I love, uh, you know, here in Orlando, we... I can't stop talking about getting on your knees, really just helps you get in that reverence for God, and the more you read about people in the Bible uh, that fight and struggle just like us, that God used to do extraordinary things, you see them drop on their knees. Jesus was on his face. The last prayer that Jesus did, he was on his face, overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. That was his last prayer as a human being. Well, no, on the cross he actually was praying too. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. But that's even more humbling, hanging there, beaten half to death, almost dead, hanging and still praying not only for the people that, manual, that, that physically did beat him, uh, that still didn't know that were throwing dice. I mean, he still was praying even before he died. But you see, like David would go, uh, I mean, uh, Daniel would pray three times a day, and when he was challenged not to pray... Uh, because he needed to worship the statue, the idol. He went and opened his door, it says his windows, and he just kept them open purposely in the square and got on his knees and prayed to God his Father. Because kill us, we win for sure. That's a biblical faith. Kill us, we win for sure. It's not like we're trying to prompt someone to take us out. But we're not going to alter our honor of our Father God Almighty. Amen? Um, you know, I want to, uh, you know, a family, he says, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. You know, what's very interesting about this is that we have so many members of God's family around the world right now with us today. Anybody who's a baptized disciple the way Jesus defines in the Bible, devoted and part of the heart, not only for their neighborhood, their city, but also the great-grandmother in Brazil they care as much about as the great-grandmother they have. You can't get to that level of love without God in your life. You, can't, you can intellectually go, amen, but you cannot really get to a point to care about people that you'll never meet and love and realize it's way bigger than you. Yes, you got your relationship with God and we're here in Orlando, but it's not only go to Orlando and help others understand the love that is so uh, surpasses knowledge. We can't comprehend it. 
When you're in that zone, you're fired up and you're willing to not only do what it takes here, but you're willing to help efforts around the world. Amen? Um, the family includes, the family of God would include all who ever believed in God Almighty in the Old Covenant and, and all who ever became disciples in the New Covenant. Wow. That means there's a lot of people that have died in the flesh that are rooting for us, as Hebrews 12 says, because of this great cloud of witnesses. You have such an extended family. You think you have problems when you visit a fellowship and you, because you don't know their name, you're like, what's your name? Hey, or you just forget it and just go, hey, bro, good to see you again, bro. <laughs> hey, sis, how you doing? Sis, you're going to be doing that for the next 10,000 years in heaven. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, sis, what's his name? <laughs> I know we get new bodies. Maybe we get new names. I didn't see that in the Bible. I want to show a clip of kind of what the family can possibly, some of the characteristics of the family in the church. I want to show a, a clip uh, of a family dinner. You know, Dennis, the way your face lights up when you describe your ambitions, it's really inspiring. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks. It's it, because I understand how you feel, that passion, and sharing it with other people. I think that's what life's about. I don't feel it about boats and squibs. Squids? Squids. Squids. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but I do feel it about singing. With my a cappella group, the Tone Rangers. Mm. <laughs> Although it's not as aggressive as your dream, it's really more of a, a brotherhood. It's like a musical team. It's like a symphony of guys. Guy symphony. And it's very hard to describe the true magic of a group of guys singing in perfect harmony. Mm. It's transcendent, but it's still very real. I guess the best way to, to put it in words is just, ah. Even that doesn't do it. That doesn't do it because that's just one person. And what I'm talking about is the pulse of the collective. Oh heck, let me just show you how it's done. Dad, how about a little percussion? Tap tap tapping. Tap tap tapping. Tap tap tapping. Tap tap. And mom, hi hat. Good mom. Excellent. And Gary on the kick drum. Come come. On the kick drum. Come come. That's Gary. Come, come with the kick drum. Come, come, come with the kick drum. Gary, on the kick drum. Come, come. That's Gary on the kick drum. Go. And Gary, in the house. Come, come. Come, come with the kick drum. Come, come. I'm just not really the kick drum kind of guy. I'd rather be just a listener and enjoy all the, the banging that he's doing. In you know, the, uh, Gary, that's your prerogative. That's your right to listen. Hang time. I got to talk to Brooke about something. It's called the bass line. Excuse me. Good Carol. Good Brooks. Yes, Dennis. Totally awesome. And tank and tank, tank, tank and tank, tank and tank, tank. Move yourself. You always live your life, never thinking of the future. Prove yourself. You are the move you make. Take your chances, win or lose. Ah, see yourself. You're every step you take. You and you, and that's the only way. Shake, shake, shake yourself. You're every move you make. So the story goes. Like the way you start out when you enter into God's family. <laughs> Everybody at that table could identify with an expression. A lot of us could go, I'm just not a kick drum kind of guy, and you're, you need to get out of my face, weirdo. Because when we all come in and we learn to worship God from his truth, we all realize that there is a freedom in Christ. And by the way, God called Jesus to die for 
all people, all nations. That means you never know what will come into the family. So we need to be ready to not be self-righteous or, or uh, have our own way of looking at things and immediately look at someone like they're, and, and categorize them from our perspective. Now, we all might need a little bit of help, which I believe we all do. But you got to realize that uh, you got to give that one guy credit, the singer. Because he had zeal, and he actually got everybody to sing together. Except for the stubborn, rebellious guy. Because he just wouldn't get out of his comfort zone. You see, singing is part of God's kingdom. When we sing, when I came into the church in 93, I go, I'm just not a singing kind of guy. That's really where I was. I, I did not know, and I wasn't trying to be rebellious. I said, I like everything that's going on so far, and even the hand clapping, I can get through it. <laughs> and then a brother pulled me aside later on and said, hey, listen, singing is of God. And, you know, as a young Christian, I said, where's that in the Bible? And he said, I'll show you. And I went, wow. And then because I love Jesus and love God and know that I became a disciple, I realized I need to be a kick drum kind of guy singer. So that's when I started to realize that I'm going to realize that my perceptive on what to do and what not to do, I'm going to be very flexible because unity is more important than, 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 than independence in certain areas. Because when we come together, we need to be unified as a family. But the Bible says here, we kneel before our Father, which is our God in heaven. But how do you become part of this family? Even if you're that guy that goes, move yourself. And then he even did this weird little thing. He goes, literally. <laughs> we need to love those kind of people too. <laughs> and you know what? You might, you might actually be so deceived that you may be that kind of a person. But you're looking at everybody else. You're looking at somebody else doing some kind of a version. You're like, look at that weirdo. Can someone help him? And everybody's like going, dude, you realize you're doing the other way. You got your own. What I'm trying to say is we're all weird. Now, that doesn't mean that if our weirdness is being a stumbling block to people that we don't need to learn to tail that weirdness, but we do it in gentleness, and we help one another because we're a family. But let me just tell you, if you look at your own families, you don't need to go too far from Thanksgiving time or whatever. There's a lot of stuff going on in our own families, right? You got an uncle this, an aunt that, but we got to love them. But in the kingdom, it's not an option because you know, you know what this is? FBI. Passport. It's my passport. Now, if I want to go somewhere out of the United States, I need to have this to enter. But more importantly, when I leave and come back, I got to be able to have this to get back into the United States. Or they're not letting me in. Now, if you look at Philippians chapter 3, I want you to relate this because this is very cool. God wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. It says that in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. He wants all, this pleases God, our Savior, and wants all people to be saved and come to knowledge of truth. In Ephesians 1, it says he wants us all to be adopted as sons. So well, you got to want to be adopted in his family. So the saying that people sometimes say we're all children of God, that's not true. We've all been created by God in his likeness, but we've drifted all very far. That's why Jesus had to come. Right. And, and what I'm trying to do is not cut someone down, but not everyone's a child of God. God wants you to be his child. But you've got to understand Christ and understand that God is waiting for you to come into his family and understand only through Christ do you become a true son or daughter. Is that awesome? Yeah. So let's look in uh, Philippians chapter 3. The title of the lesson is We Are Family to the End. But you've got to be able to ask yourself, are you critical of your family members? Or are you helpful? You know, there, there, there's, there, there's, there's discernment or criticalness. If you're critical, you're sinful. 
it doesn't do any good. You look in your mind, you tear that person down, or in a mental issue, oh my gosh, I hope someone helps him out, and you walk away. That doesn't help anybody out. Discernment is goes, oh my gosh, there's a problem over there. I need to go help that person out. So I need to, as I'm walking, I'm praying for wisdom on how I can approach him or her and speak in a way that I won't hurt their feelings or, or make them feel disrespected, but come in a way that I'm going to help them understand that showering once every four days doesn't work. <laughs> or deodorant is a good thing daily. Or whatever the issue is. If you have roommates, you know, the flood pants were in when Michael Jackson danced, but, but they only worked with Michael Jackson. He had the flood pants and the white socks. It only worked for him. After that, there was guys that wore gloves and walked around for a while. You go, dude, it's just not working for you. I mean, there was actually people that had the, that had the guts to wear those little gloves. That little glove, they'd be walking around. they tried to do their thing. I don't care how good they were. It just didn't work for them. <laughs> Michael Jackson could be on stage, his black pants, and they were purposely flooded. It wasn't like he planned it. You notice they were like right here, and he had white socks on. Now, today, if a man had flood pants and white socks with black shoes, it wouldn't be the trendiest look. But that dude just made it happen. But no one else can do that, really. They can try, but they're going to look silly. Look in this scripture here. In Philippians 3, verse uh, 17. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Basically, I call it this way of life. All through the scriptures, Paul will say, I'm sending you Timothy. He will remind you of my way of life. Or, or Paul will go, you know my way of life, my patience, my purpose, my faith. There's a way of life that Jesus set. Not just salvation, but a way of living together and an order of how we conduct God's family, his church, and how we do things. And he says here in verse 18, For I have often told you before, and now tell you again with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly, as we le and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly Bibles, our bodies, lowly, lowly bo bodies, so that they will be like his glorious body. See, I just can't get the Bible out of my mind. I'm so spiritual. I'm just kidding. That was a mistake. I'm weird. <laughs> Verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven. Everybody understands citizenship. Now, I'm not... I'm not talking the way the world acts. I'm talking about God says there's absolutely going to need to be a heavenly passport that is valid at judgment. And it's going to have to be stamped with the genuine biblical blood of Christ. The way the Bible describes it, not the way self-proclaimed people tell you, if it's off the Bible. So you can carry... You can walk around and say, I'm a Christian all day long and fight about churches all day long. If you're prideful and not really honest to the word and going, are we really living up to the standard? Is the church teaching the real doctrine? Or do you just stay away from it and go, I just need to, you know, I'm, it's every, you know, we're saved by grace. No, and that's true, we're saved by grace, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because you can go all through the world and do whatever you want and say you're a Christian all you want and say my decision is fine. The key is not really about men, or men judging you. The key is are you honest and humble enough to go in heaven? Is it going to be a valid heavenly passport that really says I am a true citizen of God's family? Because our citizenship, it says many are enemies. Yeah. Well, let's look because not only does God save us by grace, but you have to prove authenticity at judgment. Look, look in, uh, look in uh, uh, first, uh, first Peter uh, chapter 1. You, some of you go, wait a minute. We're saved by grace. We are. But you still have to prove that the grace is truly saving. And it's very powerful because you need to prove yourself. Prove yourself. <laughs> I didn't even plan that. That song works. Prove yourself. I don't know the rest of the words. 
It says in verse 3, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, family, God is all of our Father. In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. You don't have it. Even when you are baptized into Christ the way Jesus teaches salvation, you have to have your own faith in the blood of Christ. Your sins get forgiven. You receive his gift of the Spirit the way Jesus teaches, the way the Scriptures teach. But it says here that even when you're saved, you're not, you don't got, you're not in heaven. Who's in heaven? Who's in heaven? You're going to stub your toe and it's going to hurt all week. You're, you don't have a perfect life, even though you may be saved. You may get a flu, a cough. You may break your leg. You may have your radiator blow up this week and you may be short on rent. And there may be roaches running all through your house and you're a Christian. Wait, I thought God's supposed to be protecting me. No, no, you're still living in the desert. You got the passport stamped. You haven't gone on the final trip. You're in the departure lounge right now for the ultimate journey. And the ultimate journey for the eternal vacation is heaven. And it says this inheritance is kept for you in heaven. Now, it says here um, in verse 5, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come from who? God. God either allowed them or causes them. These trials and griefs of many kind, either, are, either God allows them to come or sends them. And we talked last week about discipline of God. But you got to realize these have come. What are they just like just out of the blue, just bad luck? You have to be in the right. No, these have come. God's in control of all things. These trials and griefs of many kind, even though you have an inheritance kept in heaven, he says these have come so that your proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise Glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Proven genuine, proven genuineness at the passport entrance of judgment. You can stay all day long and defend yourself because we're not the judge. In fact, I will not argue with someone about where they are with God. If they want to ask questions, I will sit down and I will listen to and I'm always looking to learn. I will not argue with someone that thinks they're set upon. I don't. I move on. Yeah. And even if I see they're not right with God, after I've understood what they're saying, and I know the Bible is contradictory, I will try to gently say, can I show something? And no disrespect, I'm a beggar that found this out myself. Can I show you something? And then if they defend or argue after I made a few efforts, I go, you know what? I can't. I don't want to disrespect you anymore. I'm trying to show you something, so obviously you disagree, but I just needed to do that because I feel like it's an obligation that I would want you to do that to me. But right now, you don't seem like you want to be open to the fact that your passport to heaven is invalid because you're arguing with Scripture. So I'm not going to argue anymore, but I'm here. Here's my number, but I won't argue anymore. And I won't get with you again if you want to argue. If you're open to possibly saying you could be wrong, I will give it. But I'm not just going to get together. I, if I wanted to be a lawyer, I would have went into law school after graduating from Come on. I would have debated. Let's get together. Let's debate. I don't fight and debate. I persuade and plead. And then I go, and then I share all the mistakes I made and how God saved me. And then I say, if you want to see the way to get your citizenship through Christ, we can just start, you know, start ground zero. And, and I won't answer any questions. By myself, I'll just show you scripture. And if there's anything I've done wrong, I'll thank you very much if you show me as well. Because I want to make sure that the, uh, the security at judgment <laughs> goes. Well done. <laughs> That's what you want to hear. You want to hear at judgment. You want to hear God go. Well done, good and faithful servant. So that's what we need to do as a family. We need to make sure that we are striving to be rooted in love. 
And we need to understand we'll never, never arrive. But the issue is you must, you must love one another. It's not even an option if you're going to be in this family. Jesus says you must love one another. As I believe. Wait, 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 wait. You don't know. No, 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 no. You must. And, and we'll get to the next part. I know there's going to be fights in the family. But now we're going to talk about you must forgive one another. And you must settle matters quickly. And you must not go to bed angry. Oh, wow, this is a tough family. Yeah, but if you trust me, it's going to be a real peaceful family if we follow it this way. Amen? So, uh, point number two. I mean, excuse me, point number one. I believe in God. I believe God believes in me. Do you believe God believes in you? Okay. Then, then point number one is believe in each other as God does for you. Uh, clip number two is imagine that, how to sing. That's a good one, too. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Now don't hog the picture now. How are you going to hog the picture? Wait, the picture's not right unless daddy's in the picture. That's magic. Come on, it's late. Okay, come on. Daddy, I'm scared about the fall swing on Saturday. What are you afraid of? Your mother told me you were excited about it. Well, everybody has a solo, and mine is on the last song. And I start it. So if I mess up, the whole entire song is wrecked. What makes you think you're going to mess up? I can't sing. What do you mean you can't sing? I can't. Yes, you can. Where's the song you're going to sing? Let me see. I'll put it to the right page. What song yeah, do you do? This page. All right. All you need is love. I'll catch a good one. It's the Beatles. Tell you what. Here's what you do. Come over here. I'm going to get you on stage here. This is the stage now. No, no, you're going to get on stage, and I'm going to be in the audience. It's going to be just like you're at the play. And all the people in the audience, I came to see the show. We all like, ooh, this is great. Well, I can't wait to see this. Who's in this show? Well, who's that? I wonder if she can sing. All right, now you got to get ready now. So you got to get ready to sing because everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. Now you got to say, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. I can't. Yes, you can. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can do that can't be done. But here's how you're singing it. You say it, and then you take the last word and just stretch it out. And say, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nah, I didn't go to that. <laughs> There's nothing you can do that can't be done. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. Yeah, all right. Now, here's the second line. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Let me go higher now. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. A little higher, though. Higher, higher. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Oh, my sound like many ripetin. Okay, let's drop it low. Let's do it like a frog. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Daddy, you're just doing what I did to you. Yeah, that's right. I'm doing what you did to me. Now let's try. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. you're doing it. Okay, listen. Okay, here's the next one. There's nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. And nothing you can say but can learn how to play the game. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Ah, that's it. That's it. You're singing. Take a bow. Oh, she was wonderful. You going to the top. She going to the top. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 18, verse 28. Believe in each other. As God does for you. You want to have a church that's the light of the world? You want to show God that you're grateful for the blood of Christ and the grace and the amazing mercy that we have every day? Then show it in gratitude and show it in looking at one another, not at their faults, not at what they can't do. Look at what you believe they can do. And it doesn't matter what they can't do, and it doesn't matter how far they go. Just get them to believe to try. Just get them to believe that they can make another step. Like that dad was so enthusiastic. He just didn't get with the person and go, okay, let's have Jesus. No, you got to get exu You got to be excited about people. You, you notice how he just made it up as he went? I don't think that's a real song lesson, is it, Charles? Just, just say the words and then just add long. Nothing can't be done. Is that how you, is that how you teach song ministry, Charles? All right, but, but see, he worked with what he had, and bottom line, he was positive, fired up, set the scene, believed in him. That little kid, his daughter, changed from going, I'm scared to death, I'm not doing it, to, to I'm going to still be scared, but I can, I can do this. And you have to look at each other that way, and that way, 
you'll get looked at that way, and we all will meet each other as God inspires us. Because look at this scripture. This is awesome. It says in Psalm 18, 28, You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. So you saw that father. He kept that daughter's lamp burning when it was going out, and, and I, I can't do it. With your help, I can advance against a troop. Who? Your help. God believes in you. He's got to give you help. He says, with my God, I can scale a wall. You ever tried to really go over a wall physically? Wow. The older I got, it's harder. I haven't gone over a wall in a long time, but believe me, look at a six-feet wall, 40 and over. Try to do it. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. His he shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for ba battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. Now here it is. You. Make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. Your help has made me great. Not compare. You don't, your, your job's not to be on the earth to compare to others. Compare, despair. Your eyes to fix on Jesus and go, God gave you exactly the set of DNA you do, and what are you doing with it for God? And as you do it, you'll be able to provide help for others as you overcome your walls, as you take up your battles and overcome them, as you advance against a troop. This time it's not going to work. There's no way. I don't know. I got things on my plate right now that I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I already have surrendered it to God. This week I've got to make decisions financially for my son, and I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm at peace now because I know God will give me the way. All of us have those kind of things. You can either keep it on your shoulders and go, I'm just going to figure it out myself. And you're miserable, by the way, and you even, uh, it doesn't work out for you. You can see when people have the load of the world on their shoulders. Have you ever heard the saying, why is your, why the long face? You ever heard of that? You know where that came from? I just found that out the other day. Because it's a good saying. Why, why is your face so long? Why the long face? The long face means you're down. It's a horse. If you look at a face, the horse never smiles. It's just a long face. Why the long face? That's where it came from, from Westerns. I, I, I'm kidding, I found that out. Look at a horse, they're never like this. They're just like, except when they eat a carrot, they go. So, but you guys gotta understand this. God keeps your lamp burning, what would that mean? You're getting, you're getting depressed. You're getting down. You're starting to spiral. God can have you capture those thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. And like an airplane, pull up, pull up. Eh, pull up, pull up. You're gonna, you don't have to do you don't have to go down. But we need to take that from God. And then God says, work through each other. And people need encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. 80% of what you do should be encouragement. Amen. Five to ten percent should be correction and rebuke. And it's not in the Bible exactly, but I believe if you look through the, the times it says encourage one another daily, yeah. all the different ways, right. love one another, love deeply, yeah. and uh, love covers over a multitude of sins. If you're doing that more, then you're looking at that person as you can do it. Yeah. And then you, they're, they're already, they're, you already got them in your corner, so now when there's those hard talks, they're going to be more open to listen because you've got to care about them when they're in sin, too. Amen. But we got to take it up. we got to take up our game, church. Amen. We are family. Point number three. I mean, point number two. Excuse me. Why am I doing that? Point number two. Point number two, don't let your regrets haunt you. Don't let your regrets haunt you. What do I mean by that? If you have regrets, either you've got to forgive yourself and forget the past if it can't be changed. If you've not, if you, if you, if you can't make something, if you can't change the outcome of something, then you have to surrender it. But if you've hurt somebody or something's been estranged from you by a person and that person's still alive, don't let time continually to go. Make the call. 
Make the effort. Make the writing of a letter and say, I love you. I blew it. I haven't done this. I just want to tell you. I don't even know if you want to get here from me. But I am heavy, and this I know I've hurt you, and I'm sorry. When you do what you can, even if they don't respond, you don't have these regrets. Because, see, when you repent of sin, there can be no regret. But you've got to make every effort, as far as you're concerned, to change it. Does that make sense? I got a clip for you. Click, click, click. I love you, son. This is a, this, this is a hold on, bro. This is a clip of a, of a guy that gets to go back, in the, back to the past, and he regrets putting his life, in, it, putting so much time into his work and his life that he neglected his children, and he didn't really treat his dad the way he did, and his dad has died, and he's regretting it, and he can't make it up. It won't take you there. Take me where? To the moment he died. You weren't there. Of course I wasn't. Can you take me to the last time I saw him, please? Hey, Dad. Sorry to uh, bug you. Would you mind looking at my, uh, my shopping mall design again? This one is cheaper. But if you check this out, You'll see it has Whoa. a much better natural flow. Chief Look Owen, ahead. like I said, I just let me do my email. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Dad. Um, he ain't right. You're a schmuck. Better. Look at it. Surprise. Hey, Grandpa. Oh, my God. <laughs> when did you get so handsome? So, Michael, I had a wonderful idea. Your mother's playing canasta with her friends tonight. I thought, oh, what a great opportunity. You, me, and Ben should go and have a boys' night out. Can't. What do you mean you can't? You have to eat sometime. We could go, we could whistle at pretty girls. <laughs> I'm down for that. See, he's down. I don't know what it means, but he's down. <laughs> hey, please. Don't give me that finger. I'll make you a deal. If you come, I'll show you the quarter trick. Will you look at the man? I'll tell you the secret. No, Dad. Don't you want to know how I you do the stupid trick? I've always known. Can you let me do my work? You've always known. You're pathetic. <laughs> I'm so sorry I parched in. I love you, son. See you later, Grandpa. I love you. Dad. Bob. Bob. Love you too, Dad. I'll miss you. You know that. You know, and this might be hard for some of us uh, that maybe weren't weren't able to uh, maybe make resolution with somebody or try to make an effort. But but you got to realize what's done is done, and God is here. But I'm talking about right now, if you're in God's family, you can't let undone, unresolved things linger. You need to be a peacemaker. You need to be one that goes in. You can say, well, it's all their fault. They didn't do this. They didn't. It doesn't matter. You need to make sure your heart is clear. 
You need to say, I forgive you. I've been thinking and not bring it back. And it's not for them. It's for your heart before God. But you're actually opening the door to see if they may want to go, I'm sorry. The issue, though, is just you doing your effort so you, so you won't have any regrets that haunt you. Look in, um, look in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. And it says here in verse 7, all thing, uh, the, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you will pray. You may pray. Above all. Love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do it as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do it with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The key is your lifespan, even if you're allowed to die in your 70s or 80s or 90s or 100, it's short. The end of all things is near. It fits relatively into all of us. We're all in the departure lounge. Just let's, If you're 20, you're in the departure lounge compared to time. You need to be alert and of sober mind. So you can pray. There we are again. Pray. Get your heart right. Ask God. Deal with God first. Help me to deal with my heart. Help me to figure it out. And then it says, above all, which is of first importance, we need to learn to love deeply. Because our love will co cover over attitudes returning. You've got to love deeply and always think that it's not good to have regrets. And then when we serve, we need to serve deeply out of love for God. Uh, you know, raise up to do what you're called to do in, in God's family. Be part of the family. Amen. If it's to do the dishes, which would be maybe a, a Bible talk leader or a, or a usher or, 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 or children's ministry, then please don't say, no, I'm not doing the dishes, even though I, I eat and you feed me. I don't want to do it. Can you imagine telling somebody in your family that? Thanks for the mo meal, Mom, again. And no, I don't want to do the dishes. I want to go to my room and chill and watch Netflix now. Thanks for feeding me. No, you're going to start to participate. Because you're going to realize you are in the family. And in God's family, there's a lot that happens. I want to say hats off to all, we call them servants of Christ, Bible talk leaders here. Because you've got to be a servant as you raise up to be a leader. And, and uh, you know, I, I want to lift up a brother... Uh, 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 Gary led his first Bible discussion in our Bible talk uh, last Thursday. And Gary and Carmen and Leonard and Sebastian, their family, what a great joy. They've come back to the Lord, humble, just on fire, passionate. And uh, he, he just did a great job. I, I, just, I, I just am proud and fired up to see your passion to want to help serve in God's family. So great job. All the other Bible Talk Servants of Christ leaders that are in Orlando and Tampa, thank you. You're not any better than anybody. You're just stepping up going, I'm reading my Bible. I'm actually able to explain it now. I'm actually taking time to study it, and I'm learning to love people so now I can use it to help someone else understand. Uh, Kids Kingdom, thank you so much, John and Patricia Green. John and Patricia Green, I mean, for us, Sonia and I, they broke the mold. Obviously, they have four young children, which that's a good thing. You know what? Parents with children should be involved because you know what? It's going to be natural. Don't feel weird that you actually want it to be awesome because you have kids. I think it's a genius. But they do care about others' kids as much. And they've done a great job in training right now. And I really want to raise up Jutney and Zico, who are who have now accepted the training position, and they're serving now because they got to go through the rotation to see what goes on. But they've actually assumed the training position to take over as the Kids' Kingdom coordinators. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sound media team, Devon Gleason, Diego, uh, Diego, uh, what's your whole name? Say it one more time. That's why I call him BB. <laughs> I call him BB for short. The, 
they put our websites, our Facebook pages, our, our life on campus. They, if you look on our website, you want to tell someone to go to church, tell them to go to OrlandoICC.org. Everything's up to date. There's Bible. They put all the, the, the lessons and studies right up, the exact directions, exact, exact place, how to get there from, from everything. And they're just on it. And he's a full-time, works his, he's got, he's got his master's degree and works a full-time job. Uh, Devon has his own company and business. Sheena, his awesome wife, who's a cheerleader and does so much behind the scenes as well, has kids. But, they, but these are servants. Administration, Marie. Marie does, she never, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but she does the paperwork and the itemizing and making sure every penny is accounted for and used as best we can in God's kingdom. Song leaders, Charles, done a great job. Charles, Charles is awesome because he's got the conviction to lead, and he's also got the, the, the confidence in God to make others great. This song ministry continues to improve. Good night. They had Dave Rogers up here doing the bass. When you serve, you should love it. You should love it. So, final point. Perf, uh, protect God's way of life at all costs. With this way of life, the mafia says this thing of ours, now that's completely opposite, but they even have something they're trying to protect, which is demonic. But they say this thing of ours, La Cosa Nostra. They have coats. Everybody has something they're trying to protect. But without God's plan, this way of life, baptized into Christ, into God's family, it needs to be protected like you'd protect your own children in your house. If, there was, if they, your kid was out front and you saw a car pull up and they were trying to sell drugs, you would not just sit there and go, oh, he's talking to people, wait till he comes in, we'll have the prayer. No, you'd run out there and say, get away from him. You're going to protect the family at all costs. You're not wanting that kid to use drugs, number one. And number two, you don't want that kid to bring drugs in the house. Got to fight. Let's look at this uh, uh, clip, uh, How to Love. Easily broken, not easy broken. You want to know? Yes. Your daddy was rotten. You're too young to understand what was going on in that house, Clarice. He was a nasty bastard. Mama. Don't mama me. He hit me. my face. Now you listen to me real good. When they stay and they done already left, they get mean. I hated your daddy. Mom. No, I hated him. I hated him. You were right to throw Dave out of here before he hits you. No. <laughs> no, Dave is not like that. And that wasn't the way to handle that. I shouldn't have listened to you. I shouldn't have listened to you. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not. Black women have to be strong. And you know that. I don't know what kind of pain you were holding on to in your heart, mama, but you need to let it go. You need to just let it go. And in all your lessons about how I need to be strong and proud and independent, mama, you left out some very important things. What? How to love, mama. How to really care about somebody. How to forgive. I cared about you. I loved you best I could. I gave you everything in me that he didn't take. And he took everything. Can't you see that? I know you did, Mom. And if that ain't good enough for you, then I'm sorry for you. Mom, 
I'm so sorry for you. I didn't mean to come out here and disrespect you. I, I really did. But it's time for me to grow up. And I'm gonna have to ask you to leave my house. Because I want my husband. I want my husband back. And I want to fight for my marriage. Because, Mama, I don't want to end up like you. I don't. I'm gonna pray for you, Mama. I love you so much. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Now, you might think, wow, that was the last thing I thought was going to happen was that that daughter was actually going to ask her to leave. Well, you got to see why. doesn't mean it wasn't under, unjustifying the abuse that that woman, unfortunately, went through. But what she did not understand is that she had something that is going to destroy others as it's destroyed her. And that's what she said. I'm not saying to underestimate your past or that, but you are in God's family. You can... Your past is real, and it's painful, but you cannot bring your past into the church and get bitter. That is a disease that destroys people and churches and families in God's kingdom. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 14. Make every effort to live at peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one can see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See, bitterness, will you'll lose your salvation. And see, all through the Bible, it's very clear, not once saved, always saved. God expects you to get there. And then people go, well, what about in a, in, where it says he knew you and chose you and predestined you before the creation of the world? Well, then you need to show that you are one of those and your passport's authentic. You could be a false brother or sister. Because if you really were chosen, it's not worth debating it. Just live to the end and show God you were God's person. It says make every effort or see to it that everyone's in peace in this family. Doesn't mean everyone's going to be perfect. Everyone's in peace and everyone's to be holy. And it says without holiness, no one's going to see God. Wow. And then it even says, see to it, see to it. Who sees to it? The bitter person or the person that sees the bitter person? The person that sees the person that's bitter. Yeah. You just can't go, I hope they get rid of their bitterness. No, you go, I'm concerned. I need to have a talk. We need to get in there. This brother, sister, out of the state, realize they're bitter. There's some comments of bitter. Sometimes bitterness can be so, de so deceptive that you don't even know you're bitter. Yeah. But you're complaining and you're unhappy and there's always something wrong. Yeah. Come on. And we've all been there. I've been there. On, so th this is another thing. Believe me. When we talk about hard things in the church, don't start going, oh, God. No. Go embrace it and go, guess what? Everybody else either has or will visit the bitterness room. On, you don't want to stay there, but you, but you will be there. But it says, see to it. Look how important it is. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. You fall short of the grace of God, you lose your salvation. You're saved by grace. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. That mother, not to take away the pain, and her, dad, and her husband was rotten. But see, it was over. And she, he's not there anymore. And the bitterness was still in there. And that's why the daughter said, I am so sorry. And she said, Virgin, I gotta ask you to leave. Because your bitterness has actually caused me, even though our husband has to be having some bumps, I'm actually being affected your business instead of fighting for my marriage. You never taught me, you, you have show, you've shown me how to show, tell people what they've done to you and how wrong it was and how much they hurt you and how you don't trust and you have trust issues and you don't trust nobody. That's great, but that's not helping me. You needed to show me how to love, how to have mercy, how to forgive. I need to learn that. My marriage is going to die because you're bitter. So you got to leave. 
Or you got to repent. Come on. But if you stay bitter, it's going to destroy the family of God. Come on, Chris. Come on. Talk about it. So all of us will be bitter. We need to be open. But I'll tell you something right now. Protect God's way at all costs. I understand I'm saved. I need a family that follows our Father's guidelines and rules of the house. I need a family, a big brother, a little brother. I need uh, surrogate dads. I need people to call me and to check. Because I don't want to cause the problem in the house. And if I am a problem, I want to be brought back in because I want harmony and peace. And every one of us want that. We just got to be humble when we're dressed with it. So, God's way at all costs. You know, going to the final scripture, John 21, 14. I want to tell you something. We had a dating devotional uh, last night, or Friday night, with uh, the singles in, in uh, campus. And I brought a point up, and I mean it. My point was, no more dating, but much more encouraging. We're not using dating. We don't date in Orlando. How you doing? It's off the table. It's off the table. I've looked at both movements I've been in, and no matter what, now if someone wants to use it, they can. I'm not saying you can't. But dating affects so many people in different ways where even though we talk to them when they become Christians, don't be yoked together with unbelievers. You know, you guys, and you're like, but now it's just an encouragement day. Don't worry. There's no pressure. You know, you're just gonna... It's pressure because people come from the world and they're dating them. That date world messed them up. They're like, it's still there. <laughs> so I said, let's free everybody. The Bible doesn't talk about dating. But the Bible does talk about encouraging one another daily. All right, all right. And if you're not brothers, if you're not encouraging your sisters and, and being close friendships with them, you're in sin. Hey. Come on. Come on. And sisters, if you're not encouraging your brothers well. and going out, and, 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 and now you can't say, I don't date. I don't date. There's people in the church who go, I don't date. I'm not doing that dating thing. Oh, well, we don't do that either. But what you're really saying is, I'm not encouraging. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not doing that encouraging thing. Oh, oh. now it's got a problem. You're, you're hurting God's family. Come on. Talk about I also this. said we're going Dutch, and everybody looked at me because it's a different generation than yours. In other words, I don't mind how old I am. I won't hear anything another way. What this means is if somebody says, hey, man, let's I said, what words do you want to use? Let's hang. Let's get to know each other. Hey, uh, you know what? I'd like to, uh, you know, if it, when, I was, when, I, when I was single and I met Sonia in the church, I'd say, hey, what's your story? Let's get together. Okay. Want to go down to Glasgow and, and have some uh, clams? She, I don't know if she liked them. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but we just hung out, man. I just hung out. I, just, I was taught to encourage my sisters. Hey. Not encourage the sisters I'm, I'm attracted to. Because see, if, you, if you're in here looking for a sister you're attracted to, you're still worldly as a, as a horse's face, as long. Look at John chapter 21. I'm going to make my case. I'm going to make my case as a DA, attorney, prosecutor, attorney. I'm going to get a conviction here on you. It says here in John 21, 14 and 15, it says, So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to them, tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Now, before we get there, Jesus, Peter had betrayed and turned his back on the family. When Jesus needed him worse, the most, he, he cut bait and ran. That's another thing. I find that remnant people that fall away and come back, I realize what they said, there's truth to it. Anyone who leaves God's family and falls away, they've been hurt. They've been seeped. And everybody tells me a story, I go, great. Oh, a leader hurt you? I'm not surprised, because they're sinners too, but... Amen. Now, if, if you need help to work through that, we'll get back in there because we don't want that leader doing it to anybody else. Yeah. But guess what? Have some compassion. Don't put that leader on a Jesus plat. That's right. Number two, though, you never should have left. Right. And they look at me like, what are you talking? I know you never should have left. Right. If the guy punched you in the face and told you to go share with 5,000 people before noon, 
then number one, you're a coward because you didn't seek to understand and say, can you help me understand that? Because that's not my faith and I'm very overwhelmed. Don't just walk away and go, wow, my leader told me. <laughs> my leader told me to do this. Seek to understand. Respect the leadership as you trust in the Lord. Respect God and submit to your, the people that are in positions, not because they always are right, because they're going to use scripture to back it. And you can come back and go, I don't understand. Come on. Can you help me understand? I'm not trying to you know, be, be mean. I just don't. I need help with my faith here. Yeah. I'm trying to understand. I'm seeking to understand. Can you teach a little bit more on where this is coming from so I can understand? Come on. Because I'm sure you know that we're following God, not you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't say that, but, but you know that. <laughs> that. That wouldn't be a good thought to keep going. You know, <laughs> because I assure you, anybody in position of ministry does not want to try to control you. Yeah. Yeah. Try, to try to control you. You want to control people who like your stuff you ever want? Oh. I'm going, God, thank you for being our father. Go, 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 go follow him. I assist just like a family member, an older brother, and I've hopefully learned my lesson so I can grab the younger brother and quit hitting your sister, bro. And then, my, and, and then God will look down and go, yeah, just like you were hitting her when you were younger, and you learned to be gentle. You mature. See what I'm saying? Come on. So in this, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. The first time Jesus says, do you love me? It's Greek. Word agape means self-sacrificial love. He says, do you love me? He's making a point, do you know I'm God? Do you love me as God? Self-sacrificial, not by feelings. That's why Jesus says, deny yourself, carry your cross. We don't go by feelings. We go by devotion and selflessness to God. Then the second time Jesus focused on Peter alone and still used the words translated into Greek, agape, self-sacrificial. The third time Jesus used the word translated into Greek, phileo, signifying affection, Brotherly or sisterly love. He asked, in effect, are you even my friend? And see, this is the problem. We need a wife and stuff in this church. Come on, man. You and your spiritual epiphanies are going, well, I love, God says we must love one another. Great. And if that's where you're at, praise God, that is it. But be honest. If you have a snippet of an attitude, come on, man. Or you don't, you don't encourage people or go try to get to know that person that just does not interest you at all. Then Come you on. are living out of bounds. Come on. Man. Because Jesus said, if you love me as God, then you're going to obey me. And then you're going to be my friend. Yeah. And that means you're going to love each other. And you're going to be able to not go to each other. Are we friends? I know we're brothers and sisters, but are we friends? Come on. Every brother in here should be great friends with every sister in here. Amen. Every sister in here should be great friends. So when you go Dutch, basically you go, hey, let's go hang out. Everybody in Orlando needs to know when they ask you, if a brother comes up to your sister, that doesn't mean they're paid. You just go, let's go hang out. Everybody go to the
and, the, and what's in the woman's heart, yeah. and she becomes more beautiful. But if you're still focused on the looks, you're already blinded. That's right. The beauty will come out stronger when it's time, and then you'll be strong enough and mature enough to live old affection and obey God no marriage. Yeah. You see, agape is what God first. Aphelio is friendship. You're going out as friends. When I ask my friend to meet me, if I ask Travis, hey, let's go out and eat, he's not thinking I'm paying. I'm going to pay. I mean, I want to pay. I'll say, oh, hey, we're going to Chick fil A or something. We're going to stand. I'm going to order. He's going to order. And I'm not going to. They're going to go, uh, I'm, I'm just going to give him my credit card and get out of the way. He's a man. Go buy your own. <laughs> We're going to see the sunset and the dog jump out. It's going to be a train wreck. You, 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 you take it on way much more than you can handle. Don't be late for dates. Don't be late for friendships. The word date, by the way, means a set time for an appointment. See, we, we, we spun that again. That word date is thrown. It's a worldly word, guys. We still use that. I've seen it in both movements mess people up. It's now just hang out. What, what's your story? Where do you come from? What have you done? What was your conversion like? What, you, know, you, you know, appropriately. And then you go eat, and you both put your thing on, and you say it before, hey, why don't we get together for coffee, or why don't we just meet for food, or I can pick you up. I got a brother double. You want to protect each other's hearts. But you just go out and hang. You make it simple. You put, let them know what they're doing, by the way. Don't tell the sister I'm picking you up, and then call each 30-minute late increment going, we're coming still, we're coming still. Just don't come. Actually, the sister needs to say, you know what, no offense, I forgive you, but uh, it's too late right now. Let's do, let's do it again. No, 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 no harm, no foul. And you can say that, sister. You, it won't be weird, but as long as you don't have bitterness. You don't have to be hogtied all night if they're late always. You also need to know what's going on so when you get in the car with the brothers, you know that you're going to get home sometime. <laughs> so when you have a planned date, if you want to plan it, you go, hey, let's go out. Let's go out for friendship. Let's go get some hang time. Let's go out. I'll tell you what. Pick you up at 8. Go out, get something to eat. We'll be done about 10, 10.30, unless, you know, we, we, we want to make it go longer. Cool? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Okay, and then everybody goes, if no one says anything about it, everybody goes with their own money. Why would a brother that's trying to make their own life at 20, digging out with student loans, be expected to pay for everybody? That doesn't make sense. Now, 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 now I'm going to bring it in for a landing. I didn't know there were so many feelings going on. Wow. All right, listen up. You guys are making me go longer because there's a lot of fire here. The brothers are going, yes! I can ask you these things, though, man. Chivalry's chivalry. Chivalry, chivalry, man being a man, politely, shouldn't be dead in this church. When you say something, you should be there on time. You should open the door if you can. You should treat the lady like a princess or you're guarding the princess because you're not equal. You're equal in God's eyes, but you're a man. And you are to be a man that protects. So you should be there early. You should open the door. You should treat them like a lady. But it doesn't mean you have to pay. Now, guys, don't take the man or woman of God avoids all extremes. The visitors are going, good night. What kind of church is this? I'm sorry, guys, we didn't mean to, but there, there's a, like a riot. I'm going to have to probably have a couple other follow-up meetings. I didn't know there was so much heat going on. This has been simmering for like decades. It's, covered, it's, it's went from one moving into the other silently. It's like an animal destroying. You can call it, if you want to call it date, you can. I'm, not, I'm just saying, 
But it's, you got to look at it from the Bible's point of view. It's a friendship deal that shouldn't go anywhere else. And you should be encouraging, encouraging, and you shouldn't even be thinking, where's my special thing? You just love God with all your heart. That's a great expansion. Love one another as yourself and just encourage, encourage, encourage where every sister is your best friend, brothers. Every brother is your best friend, sisters. And then you just do that. You don't even think about that. Before you know it, when it's time, it'll pop. As we close out, song leaders, come on up. We're going to close out with this song. We're not going to close out with the other song. I didn't tell you.